Hello, Minnesota. Welcome back to the Tony Hernandez Show. I'm your host, Tony Hernandez. Today's Saturday, July 12th. We have a great show today. We have a Minnesota state uh, candidate for uh, the House of Representatives. Her name's Yolandita Colon. And uh, before that, I just want to wish everyone, I hope you're having a, a great summer and uh, taking it easy. I was just commenting uh, before the show how busy summer gets in Minnesota. It's like we just have this small window of good weather here and uh, people and families for good reasons have their weddings and they have their graduation parties and they have family events and and all that good stuff but i just want to remind everyone to take your time getting from point a to point b it's raining today the roads are a little bit slippery and you know you're going to get to where you're going on time so there's no need to uh, speed or anything like that but we shoot live every saturday from four o'clock to five o'clock on scc television studios here in white bear lake uh, they also play our live broadcast on spnn in st paul we thank everyone for tuning in and remind everyone of our youtube channel which is youtube.com backslash tony hernandez show feel free to share the show with your friends like it subscribe to the channel and uh, with that we're going to uh, bring on our guest but first i wanted to look at the website everyone can go to vote number four cologne.com that's vote for cologne.com and uh, this is a great candidate that we have here the kind of candidate that i truly appreciate uh, she's a true independent she's not running for uh, a democrat uh, endorsement not a republican not even the independence party this is a person who is working hard to get out there uh, to meet the people on the streets and I, I know that she's been working hard and can't wait to hear about everything that she's been doing uh, jo Landita cologne uh, you can see her website here again it's vote for cologne.com uh, she's running in the state uh, representative district 62a which is minneapolis a very uh, diverse uh, district and she says that she wants to bring a new and younger voice to the constituents of district 62a and she wants to represent uh, their needs in the state legislature she says i believe that i can better relate to the people and understand their needs i know their struggles and their challenges especially for those new americans which is a, a very uh, important issue uh, these days especially on a federal and state level is uh, the issue of immigration and she looks like she's a very strong advocate for new americans and diverse communities uh, she says i want to protect and improve their economic and social ability to achieve their individual goals so they can provide a better life for themselves and their struggling families uh, again if you want to learn more about jolandita you can go to her website uh, but with that, we're going to bring her on the show right now. Thank you very much, Olandita, for coming Thank on the you. show. It's an honor to be in your show. Thank yeah, it's, you. uh, it's uh, great to have you here and uh, see that you're running as a true uh, independent. You're not, you decided not to go the, the Democrat or, or the Republican route. And can you tell everyone a little bit of, uh, why you made that decision? Well, people are not voting. They don't vote for parties. Mm. They, they vote for issues. Mm -hmm and I'm about the people. I, I just want, um, I want to represent the people. I want to be, be, be the voice of the people. And so I'm not really like a politician. Uh, I am just a true person, a person that cares about people. And I didn't want to have to deal with the fight between the two. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to focus on what is more important, which is people. I understand. Yeah, and it seems like, you know, it, especially now, if you look at on a federal level, the, the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives has historic uh, disapproval ratings, like single digits. And oh, yes. It certainly seems like uh, people are uh, tired of the two-party system, tired of Democrats blaming yeah. Republicans and Republicans blaming Democrats. Yeah. and. Um, you know, what about, you, you know, with your campaign, you, you've been going out there meeting a lot of people. C what have you been uh, doing specifically w with the campaign to get out there and meeting the people of your district? I've been um, focusing on meeting the business people. I've been focusing on meeting um, leaders of the community, uh, pastors of the community. Um, and this coming week, we're going to be canvassing out uh, house by house. So you're going to be out there door knocking and, and getting out there? Yes. <laughs> I could imagine that you probably uh, need a little bit of help for that. Oh, a lot. <laughs> We're looking to have at least 100 volunteers. 
100 volunteers? That, yes. And so your district is, it's House District 62A, is that correct? Yes. And what is the geography of that district? What city is it in? And then what uh, neighborhoods uh, is that district? Okay, this is uh, from the Lake Street all the way to 94, from Lindell all the way to 55, and it encumbers um, uh, Phillips neighborhood, uh, Ventura, a little bit of Whittier neighborhood, and a little bit of Potterhorn. Um, and it's in South Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. It's so it's a, a pretty diverse uh, district. Then, well, Very. Wh what's the makeup of the people? Is it uh, people from basically all cultures? Oh yes, uh, it's twenty five percent are African American, okay. um, and that has the East African Americans in it also, and uh, also twenty two percent are Latino. Um, so, and there's other cultures like Asian, Indian. Mm -hmm. uh, fifty five, almost fifty six percent are minorities. Wow. I know that I've been uh, in that district many, many times for some of the great restaurants that are oh in the yeah. area. I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of mm -hmm. uh, Mexican food and uh, different ethnic foods. Oh uh, yes. So there's a, a good restaurant community there. Have you been meeting with uh, the restaurant owners? Yes, I have. I have in the Global Market and um, some of the businesses in Lake Street. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what sort of uh, issues are, are, are they bringing up? Um, are they happy with the way things are oh with no. the state? They're not happy with the way things are. They they are ready for a change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they 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 when they when I tell them I'm not Democrat, I'm not a Republican. I'm just I just want to know. I, I just want to be the voice for the people. I want to be a part of the solution, and and they love it. They are like, oh, we we need that, and so they're they're ready for change. That's mm -hmm. what I hear from everyone. They are ready for a change. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people <laughs> are uh, what ready for change in the way they do things in the state capitol, especially yeah. when you hear about, you know, some of these uh, projects like, um, you know, building the Senate new Senate building, which is going to cost the taxpayers ninety million dollars, oh. and it just seems <laughs> like people. It seems like. St. Paul is out of touch with how working mm -hmm. and middle class uh, families are in, in, in our district or in our state. Yeah. But uh, we have some pictures here, and I wanted to talk more about some of the outreach that, that you've been doing. So, Dallas, if we can uh, pop up some of these, uh, these pictures here, we're just going to kind of go through. This is you uh, visiting one of the businesses? Yes, then? she's one of the business owners there in a supermarket there in Lake Street. Wow. And she looks like a young gal for for, for well, a business she, owner. She's actually the the daughter of the uh, of the owners of the place. And she was the one who met me. And we got uh, this picture here. And, and this is Ramon, Ramon Leon. He is the um, he is actually a pioneer uh, here in Minneapolis. He was the one who started El Mercado Central, mm. and he uh, helped a lot with the global market uh, um, businesses and. He is, uh, I believe it's L-E-D-C, uh, the CEO, um, a very well-known man. Uh, uh, it's a very um, recognized man, very respected man in the community. Nice. And then we got, uh, here's a picture. It just looks like you're doing some uh, talking to some voters right on, uh, is that Lake Street yeah, right there? Yeah, that's right on Lake Street. <laughs> yeah. She was very, very flabbergasted to meet me, and she's like, oh, you're running it for as an independent, and they're just so happy. Uh, this man in the bicycle, he, has, he says he doesn't vote, mm. and I, told, I encouraged him to register and vote, and he said he was going to do that. I even gave him a registration so he can register and send it in. Nice. <laughs> that's, uh, that's good. We need to get more people to vote. And, you know, one of the things on, y on your campaign website is it says that, y you know, you bring a new energy and a new youthful uh, energy, uh, you know, so yeah. that's got to be resonating with the people that oh, yes. you're meeting on the street Def because I Definitely. think, you know, if you look at uh, pictures of the state legislature, you'll, you'll see kind of the same uh, uh, type of group of people. You know, there's a lot, lot of uh, more elder people, people who have yeah. been in the office for many, many decades, and they're pushing a lot of the same, promoting a lot of the same policies. So people yeah. must get real excited when they meet you to yeah. <laughs> see that there be a little bit of change. So. Yes, that's what I've been experiencing. Lots of positive. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so we got some more pictures here. It looks like, looks like the same group. Uh, so where is where's this picture at? This looks like this you're with some uh, Somali Americans. Yeah, this was at the uh, Somali uh, Independence Day Festival. Mm -hmm. It was really awesome. I tell you, Somali people are, are awesome people. I got to meet so many of them. I, I fell in love with them, I'm telling you. And, uh, and they're receiving me well. Um, and we were there. We spoke to a lot of the main leaders of the Somali um, um, community 
and I was able to meet other communities as well, but that's where we were at that festival. Yeah, that's it, it's interesting that the, to see the rise of, of these newer generation Americans becoming more involved in the political process. It, yeah. You see that in the Somali American community oh, yes. for sure. They're very um, involved. You're not in the same district as uh, Mohammed uh, Moore or Noor and um, no, uh, Mr. Okay. not Noor. <laughs> so those, are in diff those are in different ones. But yeah. are there some Somali Americans in, in your district? Oh now? yes, there's quite a, a few, yes. And yes. Uh, it, here's some more pictures, it looks like, from the, the so Somali American Festival. And yes. Do you find that uh, people from uh, these diverse communities, do they lean towards any party, or are they more looking for uh, solutions to, to better their lives for their families? Yeah, they, they, they have um, told me a lot, of, a lot of their concerns and heartbreaking, many of those. Um, they, are, they're, they are ready for a change. They mm -hmm. told me they're not happy with what's happening right now. And, and when I listen to them and they're asking me, and they're, they, one of the things that I found uh, interesting is they said, are you one of those more politicians that promise and then once you get elected, you forget about us? Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, listen, I, I've never been a politician, so I'm just real, you know. I, I care about people, and all my life I care about people. And when I tell them that, they love it. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, well, you're the kind of person we need. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just to give your, your background of your, your story more, because that, that's one of the things that you're telling people and, and communicating to people is the, is the how you are different. Um, so you are a first generation uh, coming to America, right? Well, I consider myself second generation because mm. my, my, my parents were here first. Okay. Um, and I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Mm. But my parents took me back to Puerto Rico when I was seven years old. And I was there until I was 16, and I forgot all my English. Mm. And... Um, that's what my accent comes now and my spanish now is my first language mm. um well sometimes i don't know which one is my first but i think spanish is still my first language and uh, i had to start at age 6 16 i had to start again all over again to learn my english i went through a lot of struggles a lot of hurdles but i was able to understand it and i my husband was very key in that mm. uh, he he's um i think he's a, a third generation um, American and he helped me a lot with my English. Mm -hmm. He still helps me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Puerto Rico has a, a special relationship with the United States. Um, yes. So you know when your parents uh, moved from Puerto Rico to uh, New York, did they experience uh, any struggles coming here to this country, or was it a pretty smooth oh, uh, no. immigration process? Oh no, it was well. Puerto Rico is a Commonwealth. Uh, possession of the United States. It's not a state, but um, but in Puerto Rico, the language is Spanish. Mm -hmm. And when my parents came here, they they didn't have a higher, uh, they only went through a third grade uh, education. I'm the first one in my family that graduates uh, from college. Um, and so when they got here, they struggled a lot with the language. Um, their first language is Spanish, of course. Mm -hmm. And so they had to, you know, choose the jobs that they could find. Mm -hmm. Um, like cleaning or whatever jobs they can find. So they had to go back to Puerto Rico because they felt like they couldn't make it here. Uh, and when they went back to Puerto Rico, my dad is, has an entrepreneur uh, spirit. So he, he opened the business mm. and he was very successful for 40 years mm. in Puerto Rico. Wow. And then so how did, you, uh, how did you and your family end up in Minnesota? When was this? That was in 1999, August 1999. Uh, we got offered a position here in Minnesota, and I was a senior back in, in Missouri. I was uh, studying uh, at the Southwest Missouri State University, uh, K-12 education, and um, I was a senior already, and it was a really hard decision, uh, but we made a decision, and we came. We, we wanted to serve the community here, and I finished my education here in Minneapolis. I went two more years in North Central University, and I, that's where I graduated from in, in 2001. Mm -hmm. And how do, you, uh, how do you like living in Minnesota? It's, it's better than Missouri, I promise you that. <laughs> 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 it's better. Uh, I like it. The cold, uh, I was forewarned. Don't move over there. 60 below zero. I'm like, well, that can't <laughs> be possible. But I learned this past spring that, yes, this past winter, that is, it is possible. Oh, yeah. 
I got frostbite twice last wow. summer, or last winter. And uh, <laughs> but did you, you know, at the beginning of the show, I talked about how everybody tries to drive everything into the summer months. So do yeah. you find that too? A lot of activities going on in the summer, and oh, how yeah. do you balance that with uh, your campaign for the state house between what you have to do with family and what you have to do with the campaign? It's challenging, mm -hmm. but I'm used to challenge. Mm -hmm. I've always lived in this kind of challenging life, mm -hmm. so it is hard. It is challenging, especially with you know being a mother and and doing what I do, and then the campaign. Yeah, well, I, f I still find it very fascinating that you uh, chose to run as an independent candidate, and I should believe that it shows that you have a, a, a lot of courage uh, in mm -hmm. order to do so because that definitely is the the path that uh, not too many people choose mm -hmm. but it's certainly one that you can have a, a, a lot of success with especially in the district where people aren't out there voting mm -hmm. because they're not excited about either of the yeah. the two major party candidates but yes. you know, what do you think is wrong with the two-party system and um, how you know can we uh, fix that to make it a better process for everybody? Well, like I said before, people don't vote for parties. They vote for issues and things that matter to them. And there's, I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, um, uh, how would I describe it, um, hidden agendas. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things going on yeah. and the ones that are suffering are the people mm -hmm. and uh, power struggle and all that stuff. And people are tired of that. They just want to see some real solutions. Mm -hmm. They want to see some real stuff going on, mm -hmm. you know, happening. And so they, they're ready for a change. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, you did. You did. And, you know, one of the areas where I think uh, Minnesota is falling way behind in, in the uh, studies and, and different research uh, backs that up, if you look at the statistics, is mm -hmm. in education. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, it seems like in Minnesota, if you uh, maybe live in this suburb uh, that's very affluent, then, you know, those families are lucky enough to go uh, to a great public school, mm -hmm. you know, where they'll have mm -hmm. high graduation rates. Whereas yeah. it seems like if you're in a, a lesser affluent area or an area in the urban core, um, mm -hmm. and oftentimes uh, those schools have many, many students of color, Hispanic, mm -hmm. African American. Among American, Somali American students, and if you look at the statistics of the oh, yeah. achievement gap of the students uh, in Minnesota, the students of color, uh, the, uh, their graduation rates and reading uh, testing scores and math scores, yeah. uh, there's an enormous gap between oh, yes. them and their uh, Anglo counterparts. And yes. uh, this mm -hmm. is something that we've had people on the show before trying to really hone in on what sort of policies can be promoted to mm -hmm. close the achievement gap so that students of color are graduating at higher rates that they're going out to college or uh, trade schools where they can get good paying jobs. And so my question is twofold. Why do we have this huge achievement gap in Minnesota? And uh, what can the state legislature uh, do about that to improve it? Well, first of all, we have to look at um, there's 35% disparity, like you said, in graduation rates between the white and, and black, uh, and is the, the worst gap in the whole country, Minnesota. Wow. The worst gap. And also, Minnesota has the nation's lowest high school graduation rates for the Latino and the natives here also. Incredible. It's uh, it's not in a good way, either. No. And, and this is the deal. Um, in, in Minneapolis, there are certain schools like Hope Academy and, and Cristo Rey. These mm -hmm. schools are very, um, they're doing something different. There's mm -hmm. something about the schools that they're having a higher percentage of graduation mm -hmm. and also um, uh, scores. Mm -hmm. The students are doing better and there's the same kind of mix of students, the same minority than the schools in the neighboring schools. Mm -hmm. the, the, the students that go to the neighboring schools are doing lo way lower than the schools that are uh, the students that are going to Hope Academy and Crystal Ray, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and what we need to find out is what are these schools doing differently? Obviously, they're doing they're they're teaching the same kind of students with the same neighborhoods. But what are they doing different? We should look into that. We should find out. We should study those those schools and find out if they're being successful with the kind same kind of students, minority students. Then we should find out what is it 
different? What is missing in the public system? Uh, what, what, what can we implement? And I think there's a few things that we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, teacher involvement, involvement, parent participation, I'm sure that's going on, but raise the level. You know, best practices from mm -hmm. other successful teachers in schools, even out of state, mm -hmm. doesn't have to be in state. Um, implement new programs just such as empowerment zones for for uh, for uh, students while they're going to school ages early on from ages from like say 12 or 13 to 15 um, have this empowerment zones uh, where small businesses can employ them and pay them at a lower wage uh, and uh, at the same time they can get incentives tax incentives and at the same time the students that are at risk, there are youth, youth at risk, mm -hmm. can be uh, trained early on and given a reason to get some good training, hands on, um, and and at the same time get pay something. Mm -hmm. it could be used as a as a as a apprentice kind of workshop. Um, there's so many things that we can do. Um, but I think that uh, mentoring, tutoring, that's mm -hmm. one of the things that helped me a lot when I was, you know, studying and learning English. Because when you can't understand something, you get frustrated, you lose motivation. Yeah. And tutoring is one of the things. Vocational skills training is so important. That has to do with the empowerment zones for the youth. Hmm. I don't know if I explained that yeah, well. Yeah, those, uh, those sound uh, like uh, some very good ideas, you know, especially too with uh, the English part and getting the tutoring for, for the English skills. Um, yeah. You know, very, very important to have that, that communication. Um, what about uh, with all the news that's been spent on immigration lately? We have the crisis at the border with all the children uh, who are coming to the country right now. Um, you know, you hear about it uh, in the political debates. Um, and, you know, you're running for the, yeah. the state house, which is different from a federal immigration policy. But yes. uh, in specific to Minnesota, in your opinion, is Minnesota a state that's friendly for immigrants, new Americans? I'll be honest with you. Compared to other states, Minnesota, it's ahead. <laughs> Minnesota is much better than other states when it comes to immigrants. I know because when I was in Missouri, it was very different. Mm -hmm. um, and are you talking more like just the people who are there and the, the friendliness and the openness and acceptance of the people, yes. or, or other yes. things? Yes, mm -hmm. the receiving the, the the friendliness, the um, integration of of immigration um, immigrants. Um, I don't want to get into details, but yeah, but but I think there's a lot of things that Minnesota Minnesota can still do to better mm -hmm. reach out to these immigrants. Which is, I mean, we're not we're not that good. Mm -hmm. We're still we still need to get better at that. Mm -hmm. And probably the most important thing that we can do is to have stronger schools for uh, the new immigrant families, so that their children yes. can learn yes. the skills where they'll adapt and. Yes. get the kind of jobs and create the kind of businesses that uh, yes. that we desperately need in this state there's there's no doubt for about sure. that um, well I want to thank you for all your time we're coming uh, coming to the to the end of the show but I just had a few more questions that I wanted to okay. ask if that's okay sure um, the first one I, I met your family beautiful family that thank you have your husband you. very nice and your, your two sons is that y your whole family that that's is here my right whole now family. yes and uh, <laughs> You know, are they uh, being pretty supportive of the campaign? I mean, as children, they must be pretty impressed uh, with their mother <laughs> going out there and, and running for uh, such a, a prestigious uh, position. Actually, yes. They they were the ones who encouraged me initially because wow. I, I went to them, and if they would have said no, I would have not gone for it because mm -hmm. uh, I'm very united with my family, and I say, what do you guys think? You know, this is what it's going to cost you. And I told them, you know, everything, and they're like, Mom, go for it. Mom, we are, we, we're behind you. And my husband was the first one who said, this is his favorite saying is, go for it, honey. And he, he said, yes, I'm, I will back you up. Mm -hmm. So, yes. And, you and, your, uh, you and your husband, you, you are pastor. He's the pastor, and you're the co-pastor of a, of a yeah. church? I'm the executive justice pastor, um, and he is the main pastor of the church. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how big is the, is the congregation? About 200. And uh, you're saying it's uh, a pretty diverse uh, community that, that attends as well? Yes, we have, uh, and even in the Spanish mm -hmm. people, there's a diversity of, sal uh, s um, of um, countries, Spanish countries. But we also have some black and some um, Caucasians mm -hmm. uh, in a smaller number. But that's our, our goal, to get more diversified. 
Well, I want to uh, get to uh, your um, website here again so that people can uh, go in your website. Can okay. you tell everybody what that is? My website is vote number four cologne.com. So yeah, you can go uh, to your to your website here, uh, learn more about the campaign. And uh, how about uh, are there any ways that you know you said that you do need help uh, with canvassing? Yes. With door knocking, so you definitely need volunteers. Definitely, I need all the volunteers possible on the uh, on the nineteenth. We're, we're gonna having we're gonna start ha um, canvassing the city, and also um, on the seventeenth. Oh, before I go to the seventeenth, on the nineteenth, I'm uh, we want uh, at least a hundred volunteers to help us go and cover the most territory from nine a.m. to uh, twelve uh, p.m. So, if so this is this is Saturday, Saturday, July nineteenth. July nineteenth. Okay. And then July seventeenth, um, we are doing a fundraiser at okay. Maria's Cafe oh. from six to nine. So I want to invite everyone that wants to come and support me. And I did um, get an invite for that. Where is Maria's uh, Cafe? It's in Franklin, I believe, Franklin Avenue. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. And then, so if somebody wanted to help with the canvassing on the 19th on Saturday, do, is there s like an email address that they would send or do uh, they just go to the website? They can go to my email or they can go to the website. The email is office at vote number four cologne dot com or you can go to my website and sign up under volunteer. Yeah. Okay. So again, that website, Dallas, if you want to put it up there again, the website vote for cologne dot com vote for cologne dot com. Uh, encourage and invite everybody to go to the website, learn more about Jo Landita, about her campaign, help on the 19th if you can, do some uh, door knocking, some lit dropping. I'm, I'm sure that she would uh, certainly appreciate that and you get to go out there and help a wonderful candidate with a wonderful family. And uh, Jo Landita, I want to thank you once again for, thank you for coming on the show. It's great to meet you and uh, really happy that you came thank on. Thank you. Thank you. It was thank fun. You. It was. <laughs> Good luck with uh, everything and hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's uh, Jolandita Colon, candidate for the Minnesota State House of Representatives in House District 62A, which is uh, Minneapolis, a very great and diverse uh, district. Again, her website is voteforcologne.com. Uh, everybody should go there and uh, check out her campaign. She's a great candidate, passionate, compassionate, and ready to serve the people. And 